July 3rd, 2021, Lincoln, Nebraska. A July 4th party ends in terror. An annual 3rd of July party that would soon descend into chaos. It happened in a split second, we couldn't even see. The day begins simply enough, an annual cookout for close friends and family. 21-year-old Amelia Graham invites everyone to her home and pays for it all. Amelia, she's very down-to-earth and loving, a caring and generous person. That's my favorite holiday. We always have a barbecue. It was a full-on party, at least 100 people. The atmosphere was super fun. Traditionally, the annual party ends with a fireworks show in the street, where everyone takes turns putting on a show. All my friends bring their own. Personally, I do like just lighting them off myself because it's like, oh, I whip that one off, you guys. A lot of the kids obviously couldn't wait their turns. So, you know, moms or dads would walk their kids out to the street and, you know, light the firework with them. Still, everyone is aware of the potential danger. There's a lot of trees around here. That's a fire hazard. So we do light them off in the streets. And although setting off fireworks in an active street is technically illegal in Nebraska, it's not unusual to see during the holiday. We have never had any issues with any vehicle. Sometimes they honk. A lot of the cars who were going through the block were waiting for the fireworks to be done and then driving. Before Amelia begins her fireworks show, a friend lights something known as a fountain. It's like an overgrown sparkler. It's a shower of sparks and bright light. It's almost blinding. And when it goes off, something horrifying happens. I was in the middle of the driveway, and I just see a flash of light come out of like my right eye. It's so shocking, it takes a moment to realize that a car has slammed into someone. And it's Amelia. I turned my eyes for a split second, and I just saw a body flying up into the air. She was standing in the middle of the street, and her body ends up on the curbside. I instantly call 911. 911 operator. Amelia is severely injured. She was bleeding from the head, the nose. I was terrified. It was gushing out of her mouth onto the street. I was scared. Adanya's friends and family are in a complete panic. My sister is literally pulling her hair out. And Amelia's mom was screaming. She was crying. Whoever did this to Amelia, they didn't even slow down to see what happened. We all were yelling, why would someone do this? You know, why didn't they even stop after they hit her? The car went through the four-way stop blowing through about 40 miles per hour. Was this a horrible accident, or was Amelia targeted on purpose? You would hope that it was not the intent of the driver to strike the pedestrian. They did some kind of deliberate act. I was so in shock. It could have been anyone. It all happened so quickly, nobody sees the driver or the license plate. It was a black Chevy Impala. We didn't know who it was. And Amelia is in bad shape. She was unconscious. I was trying to talk to her. With an ambulance racing to the scene, Adanya tries to stay calm as she relays information to 911. I just felt, you know, completely sick to my stomach. My heart was racing, you know, my hands were sweating. They asked me if she was still conscious and still breathing. Everyone is terrified Amelia won't make it. But then she opens her eyes. I was just kind of laying there. I was trying to get up. I couldn't get up. She got a concussion from slamming onto the concrete. She skid across the street. Amelia is rushed to the hospital. I had to have surgery on my collarbone, and they had to put a plate in it. I did have really bad road rash all over my body. My hands were um, 
all scabbed and stuff. It was fairly bad. I did not recognize myself. My face means a lot to me. And then for it to just get completely destroyed, I was scared of myself, actually. But she's lucky it isn't worse. She could have been paralyzed, brain dead, or even dead. Who ran her down? And why were they in such a hurry to get away? I was just lighting a firework. I did see the car approaching. You know, I just, I put my hands up, like, stop. It was pretty terrifying. I was hit in the front, and then I kind of just rolled. I just got knocked out. At the scene, police interview eyewitnesses and gather physical evidence. The suspect vehicle struck a parked car, leaving a transfer of black paint. The suspect's vehicle mirror broke off. Collecting that mirror, preserving that paint, could be crucial. Still, police tell Amelia and her family that they don't have much to go on. There was a lot of anger in my house. Um, everyone was just kind of upset. So friends and family take matters into their own hands, knocking on neighbors' doors to find out if anyone has video from that night. The neighbors across the street had a doorbell with a camera. Then they release that video to the media in hopes of catching whoever is behind the wheel. Tonight, a 21-year-old Lincoln woman is left with unanswered questions and severe injuries. Unbelievable video of a hit and run and the victim talking to Channel 8. I wouldn't wish this on anybody, like at all. The footage sparks immediate outrage. They want that driver to come forward. And just two days after the video goes viral, 22-year-old Isabel Knapp Cuevas tells police that she may have been involved but claims she thought she hit a firework, not a person. Amelia's family is furious. Anyone in their right mind would know that that kind of impact would have not been a firework. None of us are buying it. You know, when you hit a rock, you see it hit your windshield. If you hit a person, it would be hard to not see. I did hit her windshield big difference between hitting a firework and hitting a human being. Police match the paint residue and the broken side mirror found at the scene to the black Chevy Impala that Isabel drives. They also discover something else. Her license is revoked for a past DUI. While you're on the suspended list, your driving privileges are suspended and you're not allowed to be driving the vehicle. And that explains why she fled in a panic. The entire thing is exacerbated if there is personal injury involved while you're operating a vehicle while you're revoked. Isabel is charged with leaving the scene of an injury accident, property damage, no vehicle registration, a stop sign violation, and driving while her license was revoked. I do not believe she would have turned herself in if there wasn't anything posted on social media. She knew that she was just going to get caught based on how many people were sharing and commenting on the video. Not all of the reaction to the video is positive. Why are you in the street? You saw that there were cars coming. You shouldn't be lighting fireworks off. But the majority of the comments have been sympathetic. Oh, you're lucky to be alive. We're very thankful God was there watching over you. You're going to be OK. It meant a lot to me knowing that there's still a lot of good people out there like that. Amelia still isn't fully healed and suffers from memory loss. Her recovery was super tough. She couldn't do basic things. She always needed assistance for everything. It's a process to put myself back together. I think overall I'm doing a pretty good job at it. But for me, you know, I just, I want to move back past it as fast as possible. Moving past it includes not harboring anger towards the woman who caused her pain. I don't really have any hate towards her or anything like that. I just kind of would want to know why she didn't stop or even try to slow down or why she didn't see if I was OK. The one thing that does make Amelia sad is that for her, the 4th of July will never be the same. It just sucks. You know, I will never be able to enjoy it again. I don't believe I will ever light a firework, actually. But she knows that's a small price to pay. The lessons I've learned 
never to stand in the street again. I look at it as I have another chance. I'm not gonna let it stop me.